Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Smudan, and here with me on stage is my partner Tobias. Tobias is a software engineer, ex-Google, and I'm a designer, previously at AKQA. Last summer, we joined forces, and today we're here to present you curator.com. My slides are behind. Clicker's not working. Oh, there you go. Curator.com. <laughs> um, Curator is a platform to collect and discover fine art online. Think of it as a digital art collection where you can keep all the art you like and discover new art through each other. Only a few years ago, neither Tobias or I owned any art. We both liked art, but the idea of spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a single piece was a bit intimidating. So to first get an idea of what was out there, we started looking around. And of course, the first place we looked was online. But where do you begin? Ironically, the sites that sell art are usually the worst place to start, because they're just trying to push whatever they have for sale. And it is obviously very limited. If you want to get a wider variety, you'll need to dig through to many thousands of art blogs and gallery websites and artist portfolios and then the rest of the internet. But with enough time and enough patience, you come across the most amazing stuff. And this made us think. Wouldn't it be nice if we could somehow keep our favorite art around, regardless of whether we want to buy it or not? That way, we can get a better idea of what is out there and a better understanding of what we would want for our own walls. And that's when we realized that if we bring together many people doing the same thing, we can then connect those people and let them all discover new art through each other. What we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is the biggest collaborative art collection in the world. And let me show you how it looks like. Switch to demo, please. Switch to demo, please. This is Tobias' art collection. It also functions as his profile. But we completely rethought the traditional interface. And rather than pollute your screen with buttons, we let you recollect art by dragging it into your collection. With the same simple motion, you can organize your art in what we call rooms. And like that, we can compress an otherwise multi-step process into one single motion. Every piece you see on Curator is contributed by our users. And to make that process as easy as possible, we created a bookmarklet that enables you to collect art from any website with the click of a button. Let's go to one of my favorite art blogs. This one is called Synaptic Stimuli. And let's collect this amazing sculpture by Byung-ho Kim. We analyze the art you select with image recognition. And if you already have it in our system, we can identify it for you. After you collect it, you can then click through to the artist profile, where you can see all the other art we have from this artist. But you don't need to contribute art to get something out of Curator. In fact, for most of our users, it's about discovering art. So let me show you three ways we help you do that. First of all, there's your activity feed. This is where you can see all the art, uh, all the art being collected by the people you follow. Of course, there's much more art on Curator than what your influencers collect. And that's why we have an extensive explore section where you can find staff picks, recommended users, popular art, and more. A third way we fuel discovery you can see here on the artwork page. We encourage our users to tag the art they upload. And this enables us to create relationships between the art that would otherwise be invisible. Like here, you can see all the other art we have with skulls. Or we can search for topics like, for example, street art. Or one of my favorite topics. Astronauts. And whenever you see a piece that is so beautiful that you want to share it with all your friends, you can do so on your social network of choice. With Facebook, we even go a step further, where you can share art not as some tiny notification on the site, but as a full-blown photo gallery. So it's back to your presentation. Hello. Presentation. We're making collecting art easy and fun. And much to our joy, people seem to love it. Our users tell us how addictive it is to collect art and curator. And that probably explains why one in 10 of them, when they come to our site, spends over 30 minutes on it. We have a monthly retention rate of 17%. 16% of our users actively contributes art. And by processing our data, we can index the world's art not only way cheaper, but way faster than anyone else. 
because after only a few months in private beta, those users get over 10,000 works of art by over 3,700 artists. We're making collecting, <laughs> uh, to put that in perspective, that is about one third of the catalog of Artsy. And we expect that to double every three months or less. This is more than just the biggest collaborative art collection in the world. This is a museum for art online. A museum with a room for every artist on the planet, surrounded by an industry with very little innovation happening. Every year, people around the world spend over $12 billion on art below 50K. And um, over the past few years, we've seen a number of new players in the online art space. And they're all going after the same market. But rather than innovating, most of them are just trying to sell you art. And they seem to forget that buying art is not like buying shoes. And most people won't impulsively buy a $3,000 painting like that. You need to build some comfort before people transact. And that's why we first invest in our community. Because buying art is a process. It's a process of you finding out what art you like. And as you define your own taste, we slowly get to understand that taste. So by the time you're ready to buy something, we already know what you want. And you already know where you can find it. Thank you very much. All right. Great job, and I know you were wrangling the, not, uh, the clicker thing. This is not my clicker. I didn't. Oh, it's not it, as so. it's not as clicker. Well, good job managing it and doing your presentation simultaneously. It was uh, it was pretty impressive. Uh, all right, judges, what do you guys think? So I just maybe can you just explain a little bit better how you actually purchase the art? Because most of the art that you're gonna show will just will be pictures or other things that are found on websites. Um, but you talked at the end saying you would be able to help us figure out where to buy art. Yes, like, of how are you actually going to do that? There was only six minutes, so I couldn't get oh, any deeper on that. Sure. Um, first of all, we are not selling anything just yet. So, um, but uh, there's an enormous opportunity in online art sales. We're not the only ones who know that, Amazon being the latest example of that. Um, the big difference with our approach is that from day one, we wanted to create a product that is still useful without you necessarily wanting to buy something. Sure. So we no, invest and I agree. Creating yes. the community okay. is really yes. important. So once, once we're going to sell art, um, there's three kind of, kind of sales we want to experiment with. Um, first one being referral sales, where we refer, traffic to, uh, refer sales traffic to galleries and uh, other, potentially other art websites. Um, and uh, that way, it's great to create volume, and it's also fairly easy to implement. So it's something we can start with very soon. Uh, we don't think necessarily our big opportunity is in uh, commissions necessarily. We think our big opportunity is actually represent our own artists and sell their art directly on Curator. Obviously, at a higher commission for us, but also we can create a platform for the artists that they can reach, like they can find their audience and they can find, like, they can basically grow on our platform. And a third way, um, which is a really big opportunity, is uh, we want to let people sell their physical art from their physical art collection to each other. So right now, if you own art, I don't know if any of you guys own any art, uh, maybe one day you just get tired of a piece or you run out of wall space. Unless it's like above $20,000, there's not really any place for you to go except eBay. So we think there's an, so what people do very often is either they let it hang on their wall, even they don't really like it anymore, or they put it in storage. And there's all this great art stuffed away in so many storage space. And we think there's an enormous untapped market that we can break so, open. So you both, you want to be both an intermediary between someone who's selling a piece of art and someone who's looking for a piece of art, as well as being a place for people to show the pieces of art that they might not own that they like? Yes. And then what about, because when you're buying and selling expensive pieces of art, there's like a lot of things that go behind the provenance of the piece of artwork and the uh, official ownership of the artwork. Are you guys planning on getting involved with that as well? Uh, you mean when people sell physical art to each other? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, how exactly we'll do that. But I mean, it's, it's, I think it's not rocket science to figure that out. Um. So, so I'm somebody who's not very comfortable in the art scene. Uh -huh. it, it seems very like intangible and high cultured for me. How can, is this the kind of product that somebody like me could kind of use to sort of dip my toe into it? Yeah. Or do you think it's really going to be for people who are, who are already slightly more already into art or, or are knowledgeable about it? And if, if so, like, how does somebody like me kind of get going on a product like this? Uh, well, the, 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 the nature of our product makes it attractive okay. to a, a quite wide variety of people. So in one part, we have like very serious people who are serious about yeah. art. 
On the other side, it makes art very accessible to people who are not that serious about art. And that's a great thing. We have about, like I, I said in the presentation, we said about 16% 16 of our people contributing art. Those are like the, yeah. the people who are a little bit more serious about it. And then all the rest is just kind of looking at what other people contribute. And for them, it's a way to discover art without having to go to a gallery or a museum, with, which is quite consuming and not always very gratifying. So, so yes. who's, who's, your, um, who's your biggest competition? Is it Pinterest or art.com or someone that we Yeah, there's, there's Pinterest, there's Artsy. Um, later, I guess, uh, Amazon Art. So how, so how do you battle Pinterest? How, we how, do you, how do you beat Pinterest? It, I think it's, it's, it's a different uh, platform. Curator only evolves around art. And we also structure our data differently than Pinterest. Uh, if you pin in an artwork on Pinterest, that's really just a, a JPEG on a board. However, if you uh, collect it in, in Curator, that is, um, it's actually an artwork that is connected to an artist. And then we automatically create artist profiles where we then show more information about the artist and like what gallery represents that artist and stuff like that. I thought for sure you were going to talk about streaming. Mm -hmm. Are you going to stream the art to people's monitors? And you didn't really we, bring that up. We thought about that. <laughs> um, yeah. In, in, like, yeah, of course. But we're, we're, that's very obvious. But right now, we're, we're a very small team, so we need to start. There's only web. We don't even have mobile right now. Um, yeah. But how do you all of that. How do you judge what actually is art that can get into your system well, or not? That's the beauty of it. Unlike every other art startup right now, we don't tell you what is art. We turn that game around and we let, we let you tell us what oh art you like. But how do you prevent like cat pictures from getting into the system? <laughs> right. Because have, those are art to somebody. We, we, we have, have some systems in place yeah. that um, help us do that. We have some semi-automated systems. Uh, Filter out the cats? We have, we have a, yeah. we have a, we have a vi very high level quality control system basically yeah. that looks at multiple parameters about the user and about the artist. So we kind of get a, like educated guess about this is probably something we can show. How will you handle duplicates? Like uh, one of the biggest issues I see with Pinterest, a lot of times right. they'll see the same image multiple times. We have an image uh, recognition system in the back, so there's no duplicates. Yeah, every image gets matched. And the beauty of it is if you upload a low res image and we have a higher res image, we just replace it with a better quality. You mean of a ubiquitous piece of art? Meaning like yeah. if I like the Mona Lisa, I can take a picture of it and say I like it, but I don't own it. So yes. other people would also put duplicates of their appreciation of that Wait, piece of work. I didn't understand that question. Can you? Well, you she was talking fake? about duplicates of du duplicates of of, oh, of oh, owning mean, a physical piece of art. About, you mean fake art or duplicates of work? On you, you were talking about no, duplicates I, of. I, well, like, they're probably both good questions, but because um, there are duplicates in the real world, but then there are duplicates in the online world also. Well, um, I answer your question. Your question, um, the, the the fakes to say to take them out that already happened. Um, they usually come from websites usually where they sell those fake things. Uh, we can detect it when people try to contribute from their website. So we have a blacklist of websites, and then we just block those websites. And we give you a message about, hey, this is a website that's showing fakes. We prefer not to have that on Curator. All right. So we're out of time, but that was Curator. Thank